Intel sponsored a trip out here to Intel Tech Tour Taiwan to find out more about their upcoming Lunar Lake chip. It was kind of an architecture day where we got the deep dive on exactly what makes this next generation of mobile CPUs for their thin and light department to be so exciting. And actually, I loved doing this. We got to talk to engineers. There was tons of Q&A. I loved being here. It was a great time of connecting with other like-minded people who wanted to actually know the details of what exactly Intel is bringing to the table when it comes to Lunar Lake. So there are a few things that were not revealed to us here, such as pricing or specific release date, even though they did tell us that Lunar Lake should be launching in Q3 of this year. But what we did get was a lot of highlights of the changes that they're making under the hood that makes Lunar Lake an incredibly compelling architecture that I am excited to get my hands on once it launches. So I'm going to break this video down into three different sections. We're going to go with the overview, we're going to go with the CPU changes, and then we're going to go with the GPU changes because a lot has been done to Lunar Lake that makes it very different from chips that have come before. And I'm going to give you what I'm excited about with Lunar Lake. Intel very clearly had a lot to communicate when it came towards AI and the performance of these chips and how many tops it brings and I will disclose that but for me personally I'm really excited by things like the CPU changes under the hood as well as what they're bringing with XE2 graphics including a little sneak preview of the future so let's get into the overview section the big thing that Intel wanted us all to know is the fact that this is a flagship SOC for the next gen AI PC so they focused on a few different things when it came to Lunar Lake such as supercharging the hybrid cores doubling down on Intel Arc optimizing with multi-engine AI. And they did this by focusing on a few different key tenets, such as breakthrough x86 power efficiency, exceptional core performance, massive leap in graphics, and unmatched AI compute, with Intel saying that they get up to 40% lower power consumption than the previous generation. Generally, in the graphics department, they're saying up to 1.5 times performance with XE2 versus XE. And again, we'll deep dive on that in a second. And then with the unmatched AI compute, the entire system, an entire thin and light AI notebook from Intel is going to have up to 120 system tops. With that being broken down to up to five tops from the CPU, up to 67 from the GPU, then up to 48 from the enhanced NPU that they put into this chip. And that was a big focus by Intel here. Yes, they do have the AI compute. They do have up to 120 system tops, but they're doing that at an efficiency level that they've never had before. With them saying, that that up to 40% lower SOC power in real life applications is one of the largest improvements in Intel's generations in their history. And one of the really cool things about Intel's tech tour here in Taiwan is not just the fact that they told us these numbers and then expected us to believe them, but then we actually got to have deep dive sessions with the lead architect on the NPU who told us exactly how they achieved getting two times better performance at the same power draw and up to four times better performance overall when it came to the NPU V4 that they're launching these Lunar Lake chips. And I have to say my two favorite sessions from this entire thing was the one on Intel's E-Cores because they've done a lot to redesign them as well as the XE2 graphics, which was brought to us by Tap or Tom. Peterson here at Intel. So let's start on that CPU deep dive to look a little bit more on exactly what they changed under the hood. Because Lunar Lake has a hybrid architecture. It has four P cores and four E cores, with those four E cores now being all on a low powered island. And one of the neat things about Lunar Lake is that it doesn't have hyper threading present because instead what they've done is revamped the E cores to be more efficient and more performant, but also upgraded thread director to handle dynamically switching what tasks go to which cores in a way that allows it to be more efficient. And one of those changes is that they can now turn clusters on and off independently. So if you're working on a low powered task that only requires the performance of an E-Core, they can actually now turn off the P-Core cluster entirely at that moment. But there's also minimal latency with turning the P-Cores back on as soon as you need that burst of power. And part of that is because these new SkyMont E-Cores actually outperform the Lion Cove P-Cores at a lower 
lower power. So you're getting more efficiency and better performance when you're trying to do some of the more lesser intensive tasks. But then the P cores, when they're actually consuming more power, will outperform those E cores. And one of the reasons they decided to turn off hyper threading, at least according to the session on P cores, was that you do get improvement when it comes to hyper threading on the line cove, but it comes at a cost of total system efficiency. And it was just about deciding what works best for the system that they're trying to ship with Lunar Lake. So you can get up to 30% better IPC with hyper threading turned on, but that's at a 20% power increase. And one of the things that Intel was prioritizing here was that power efficiency. And especially with the way that ThreadDirector works, the E cores are better and more efficient than hyper threading because ThreadDirector will now prioritize just loading up the E cores first. And then if it needs more performance, it will go onto the P cores. But the way that it worked with hyper threading was that it could load up the P cores, then the E cores, and then it would go back to hyper threading. So the engineer said that hyper threading does make sense in certain instances, but when it comes to optimizing for energy and performance per power per area, hyper threading not being present here actually makes a lot of sense. And with the P cores, there's a few cool changes on Lion Cove. They've done enhanced power management, again, going towards that efficiency, but then they've made like small little tweaks that the end user won't notice that could get you up to 2% better performance in some cases by changing the intervals at which the CPU can be clocked at. The example they gave was that if a chip could theoretically go up to, let's say, 3.08 gigahertz, previously, P cores could only be clocked at 100 megahertz intervals, which meant that the fastest you could get on a chip capable of up to 3.08 gigahertz would be three gigahertz flat. But now they've switched over to 16.67 megahertz intervals, which means that the chip capable of up to 3.08 can now be clocked up to 3.067 because of the interval change, which is a 2% increase right there just because of how they've switched up the intervals. They've also improved things by making it better at out of order operations where you can more easily differentiate between integer and vector operations that are happening at a given moment. But with all of these changes and different tweaks, you can get up to 14% IPC increase on the Lunar Lake line code from the previous generation. But now let's talk about the e -core because Intel put in a lot of work. The engineer who gave this presentation was clearly incredibly passionate and knowledgeable about how they've designed these. And they've put in a lot of work to make the e-cores, which are the efficient ones, to be incredibly fast as well. With them quoting that they get up to 38% single-threaded integer improvement and up to 68% single-threaded floating point improvement. And that at one third of the power of Meteor Lake, you get the exact same performance, which is going to allow for better battery life and better performance that happens when you run them at the same power level. They quoted up to 1.7 times better performance on a single threaded application versus Meteor Lake. And then in multi-threaded applications, you can get up to 2.9 times better performance. And then if you increase the power on these new SkyMont E-Cores, you can get up to four times better multi-threaded performance on this setup which allows more work to stay on the E-cores. The P-cores don't need to be activated quite as frequently, which allows battery life to consistently stay better. And they even compared this to the desktop Raptor Lake Raptor Cove, with them saying it got up to 2% faster in IPC. And at the same performance level, when they scaled it down on single threaded, it consumed 0.6 times as much power. And at the same power level, outperformed it by 1.2 times. Now, obviously Raptor Lake gets a ton more TDP, gets a lot more power put through it so it can outperform these e-cores, but they showed that just on the efficiency standpoint, these e-cores are serious business. It was incredibly exciting and thought provoking to just hear these engineers talk about something that they have been working on for years and how they had to think from the ground up to try to re-architect some of the ways that they're bringing Lunar Lake to the mainstream, getting all of this performance out of it, especially in things like the AI tasks, but then also making sure that they're competing on battery life and efficiency and finding ways to do that by turning off the P cores, making it so that the E cores are even more powerful than before. But now let's talk about the thing I know a lot of people are waiting to hear about, the XE2 graphics. And this was actually the first time that TAP got to present that Battle Mage is indeed coming to discreet with them having a little slide, just kind of highlighting it. We didn't get any details on the gaming GPU that will be happening. 
release dates or anything like that, but it was at least stated that yes, Battle Mage is a thing that should be coming to desktop. But even if you just forget about desktop cards for a second, I am legitimately excited about the XE2 graphics that are going into Lunar Lake because Intel focused on a few different things. Higher utilization, improved work distribution, lower software overhead, and it's designed to be more compatible with games. And it is clear that they have put a lot of engineering hours into getting XE2 working. And one of the things an Intel executive said at the main keynote is that they are doubling down on ARC graphics. This is not going away. This is not something that Intel is just going to drop. ARC graphics are here to stay and they're being implemented in an incredible way. So one of the changes that they've made is that it's now a scalable and modular design, which means that the XE2 that's going into Lunar Lake is the XE2 that will go into the Battle Mage desktop graphics cards. We don't know how well it scales because they didn't reveal any of that information, but we can at least look at what it looks like on the lower end. So we're not getting two different versions, whereas previously XE LPG was found in mobile and then XE HP was what the gamers got. It's now all just XE2. And they highlighted all of the various things that they've changed, including making things like Execute Indirect natively supported in hardware, which is a big thing that's gonna be happening in Unreal Engine 5 games that are coming out. And so now Arc Graphics natively supports that. And they showed that in their internal micro benchmarks, which test out various different aspects like that execute indirect. They found between a 1.2 times improvement in performance with XE2 compared to XE1 and up to 12.5 times performance in certain micro benchmarks. That's not gonna apply to every single game, but whatever that micro benchmark was that got 12.5 times performance will now work much better on XE2 graphics. And we just got an hour long session of just being able to listen to Tap talk to us about what they've changed. People were allowed to ask questions to get some more details, including trying to get information out about the discrete desktop gaming graphics cards. But he was very coy with us, making sure to let us know to come back in the future for that. But what's clear is that Lunar Lake at its current setup can get 1.5 times performance at the exact same power as the previous generation. And then it also has things like the XMX matrix extensions, which makes it incredibly good for AI, which is how they got that up to 67 tops that are coming out of the graphics card. And they've also done things like overhaul the ray tracing setup with it having three traversal pipelines so that the ray tracing unit actually is more performant and ray tracing will be better on XE2. But then also in the graphics section, we got a breakdown on the things that they've changed to the display engine and how you can get up to 8K60 HDR and that they've re-engineered a low power optimized pipeline and they support EDP 1.5 which allows for lower power on the panel, which means that the system is consuming less power overall because of various different tweaks that they made. Or updates to the media engine. They now support new codecs such as VVC, also known as H.266, which gives you 10% file size reduction versus AV1, but at the exact same quality. And because it's natively supported in the hardware of XE2, you get less power consumption when you're trying to decode H.266 videos. And they've just worked on the GPU software stack. This is a big praise that I've had with Intel when it comes to their graphics. Intel Arc Graphics launched in a particular way and they have continuously updated it. Driver support, making sure that the community continuously is having updates so that they know that their cards are continuously getting supported. And one of the things that they showed off in demo was F1 2024. This is a game that just launched and Intel was proud to say that they had day one driver support, but they showed it running on a Lunar Lake system. We didn't get to see any of the settings or any of the details, but they did say that it was running 1080p over 60 FPS using XESS upscaling. But again, we're talking about a thin and light notebook. This is not going to be something that you slap into your desktop. So finding that this is performing in a thin and light was actually quite impressive. But overall, this Intel tech tour, where we just got a deep dive on the architecture of what's going into Lunar Lake, what we can expect, it clearly showed and communicated to me being there that Intel's excited about this architecture, number one, but they're also excited to share about it. And they allowed the media, the press, to come in and ask hard-hitting questions. The details that, you know, normally get hidden behind closed doors, they were allowed to be asked in front of everybody. It was a type of open access from Intel that made it feel like they're really confident in what they're bringing to the table here. 
Lunar Lake is supposed to launch in Q3. We don't have details on pricing. One of the things that they specifically didn't tell us about is what is it actually gonna practically be named when it comes to laptops later this year? Or what's the TDP range? There's still some things that they are finalizing with the architecture because it's not quite ready for release at the moment, but it is showing that they have something special that they are going to bring to the table. And I am thankful that Intel sponsored this video, brought me out to Taiwan to participate in Intel Tech Tour, and I cannot wait to get my hands on a Lunar Lake laptop myself.